Kilo, Charlie, three, Oscar, Oscar Lima. Kilo, Charlie, three, Oscar, Oscar uh, Lima, was that Roger? Roger, Roger. And what's the name there, please? M my name is Don, Delta, Oscar, November. I'm sorry, repeat the name again? It's Don. Um, it's the phonetics are Delta, Oscar, Oh, so you're saying Don. I thought you were saying Bob. <laughs> Don, Roger. Roger, Roger. We, we talked several days ago. Roger, Don. Uh, and what's your location, please, sir? My location is Baltimore, Maryland. Roger, and what radio are you running, sir? I, too, am running an ICOM 7300. All right, sir, and if you would uh, tell me about 10 seconds of uh, what your antenna system is. I have right now a my antenna, um, halfway inset antenna that covers from 10 to uh, 80 meters. And it seems to have been working pretty good. It's currently not polarized in the optimum direction for the East Coast, but I think it should be pretty good for you in Indiana. Uh, looks good. I've got about a 10 over on you, sir. Uh, sounds uh, sounds good. And uh, on your audio, uh, gosh, we could do a little fattening if you'd be interested. I'm very interested. I've been listening to several of the last people that you've worked with, and um, I have no idea how other people hear me. Roger. Well, we are recording now till 5, so uh, you know, you'll be able to go to YouTube later on and check that out. I'll tell you how to do that later. Right now, uh, I suggest that uh, you engage your compressor at about a 3. Turn your compressor on, adjust to a 3. My compressor currently is set to 3. Roger, roger. Now move to your ALC with mic gain in hand and adjust your ALC reading for mid-scale to two-thirds as you speak naturally into your microphone and transmit. Again? Um, uh, key your mic and uh, tell me about something for 10 seconds or so, and as you're talking, adjust your mic level to where your ALC meter is running mid-scale to two-thirds. Roger. Right now, I do have my microphone level set at 100%, and when I look at my meter, I see that my ALC is running to not quite half of the red line. Actually, I have a red line, so maybe the red line is, we don't want to go over that red line. So I'd say that I'm currently at 100% running between one half and two thirds of the red line. Uh, which mic are you using, sir? with the microphone for the ICOM. Uh, Roger, now it doesn't have any amplification in it, Roger. I don't believe so. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, that sounds like it might be a little high for the, uh, for the mic, but uh, although your level looks about right, so let's just uh, say you, you are absolutely looking at your ALC uh, reading. That's uh, It only runs about halfway across your display. Roger, Roger. Roger, Roger. So my ALC is higher, because I've learned that today. My ALC is actually higher than I thought. Roger, Roger. So you want to you want to set that, you know, you you can look at it and see where the mid scale position is. So you want to set it to pass that to where it's a, from a mid scale to two thirds, uh, with that sweet spot being halfway between mid scale and two thirds. Roger. Roger, Roger. I actually just reduced my mic gain to ninety percent, and maybe it looks like now that I'm looking at the meter that I could go to eighty percent. Roger, we'll go on. You, you know, normally, you know, like when you, if you were using the hand mic, you would barely be running about 50%, uh, 60%, uh, something like that. But you're using a desk mic and you're working further away than what you would with that hand mic. So it's, it's hard to say. But I would say, uh, you know, try it at about uh, 70%, and I'll look at your, uh, uh, your modulation and uh, tell you what's going on, Roger. Roger, Roger. Um, now I have it set. To 70%. Um, and just a review is, is earlier, based on something I read on the internet, I set the base in my equalizer 
to plus three, so that probably is affecting some of the sounds that I have here. And right now, it looks like setting the microphone gain to 70% looks great on my AL computer. Roger, I would uh, not set that bass level up that that hot on the mic. I would, I, I would go past. I would not go past plus two. Uh, you know what you want. Uh, what you're looking for is intelligibility. You want to, folks to be able to understand what you're saying, and that does not necessarily mean a broad frequency range all the way from the top to the bottom. At first off, it's very difficult to get a true balanced signal if you're you know have a hundred cycle content and a 2.9 k content. It's very hard to to get that and there are a lot of things that can happen that uh, could uh, uh, take that perfect EQ and uh, you know re reduce it to uh, um, not good because uh, you have a thing called uh, high frequency cancellation uh, phase cancellation uh, when you know all of our transmissions uh, go from here to there uh, by way of the sky wave bounce and not all the time is that sky wave bounce at a specific place sometimes it occurs at two places at once one may be Further out a little bit than the other one, and so but they both bend back. But the problem is when they bend back, uh, they could be slightly one different from the other since their spatial point of reference is uh, different from one to the other. And so when they both come back, one could be 180 degrees, 180 degrees out of phase with the other. And what's going to happen is that one is going to cancel the other if the two levels are somewhat similar. And the problem is that they start from the high frequencies and work down in that cancellation. So here you have this perfectly balanced uh, uh, audio signal, and all of a sudden you lose the whole top end because mother the nature decided to uh, y you know cancel <laughs> that out so it's a good idea and I found not to be fully uh, in in, in um, have the bottom end uh, to zero level I, I roll that uh, off a, a little bit on the bottom end but uh, I try to keep as much on the top end content as I can that it can withstand a, uh, a phase reversal or, or cancellation at the uh, you know phase cancellation so uh, what I'm saying is that uh, I would pull back a little bit on that bottom EQ to maybe uh, uh, actually plus one maybe at max uh, plus one on the bottom end and then uh, uh, you know come on up uh, maybe plus two on the top end that will give you a, should give you a very articulated audio signal the other thing is uh, and you could take notes uh, that you always want to run your radio at the uh, widest uh, bandpass possible you don't want to be running in any of those compromised band passes is because you just wipe out the top articulation when you run them at less than uh, a broadband. Now I'm talking about basically 100 to 2900. Uh, that is, uh, uh, you know, the uh, curve that I'm looking at, the, the passband. Uh, roger, roger. So I'm going to embarrass myself here a little bit. And it was actually the base I had set to zero. It was actually the treble I had to set plus three. So I'm probably in the where I need to be. And I, I can see when I look at my audio settings here that I have a setting for T, B, W. It's um, uh, wide. I don't know if that's set or not set. It's, I just see it there as a, as a choice, but I understand what you're saying. We don't want to reduce our frequency range. I think that's what you're saying, Roger. Roger. Now, what radio are you running? It's the ICOM 7300. Yes, sir. Well, on the ICOM 7300, you have, ch and you take notes, on the ICOM 7300, you have three choices for bandpass. What you want to do is run 100 to 2900. And crank that in all three of those choices. All three of those choices crank the bandpass in as 100 to 2900, so you cannot operate that radio in any other mode but 100 to 2900. Roger. Roger, Roger. I'm doing it now. And that will, uh, you know, that will let you be operating that radio at its uh, maximum capabilities, and that's exactly uh, what that radio was designed for. It has uh, excellent uh, uh, circuitry all the way through it to uh, to really shine at, at uh, maximum uh, bandpass. So I don't know if I just made any changes to my audio or not, but now all three of those are set 
to from 100 to 2,900 as suggested. Yes, sir. I think you sound fine there. Uh, and uh, there's uh, one other thing that you could do if you would be interested, and that is uh, as you uh, transmit along uh, day in and day out, if you uh, would be looking at your, say, power output meter or your uh, or your uh, VU meter, if you have one of those, I'm not sure, but uh, anything that references your audio, uh, I would be looking at that. And uh, the thing is, uh, what we want to do is keep that meter up in the sweet spot position position and uh, that can be accomplished by two ways one is the tempo of your speech you don't want to get crazy and talk real fast like that but you do want to have a certain you know consistent uh, speed and also you what you want to do is try to keep a consistency of the audio level the peaks of your words and between those uh, two items you can keep that meter reading at uh, that sweet spot position Roger Roger, Roger. I understand what you said, and I can hear in your voice when you've been talking today what you're talking about. I, don't, I think my inclination is probably to vary a little bit more in my um, speech. So I do want to say thank you for what you're doing, Jim. It's very helpful. Roger, Roger, sir. Well, we try to do what, what we can do. And uh, gosh, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, uh, my personal thought is that uh, HF radio can be so much more than what uh, a lot of folks uh, might think it could be because of the all the restrictions uh, that we're technically put under to operate in the HF frequencies. So we do have our work cut out for us in, you know, as we might compare ourselves to, um, you know, VHF or UHF uh, communications, you know, they're, they're running wide band radios and, uh, you know, they're running, uh, you know, yes, uh, today's uh, technology is, uh, their microphones are, in many cases, uh, electrode microphones with, um, you know, very good frequency response. So uh, what we're doing is, uh, this is an older uh, spectrum of, of uh, radio communications but we can make it sound uh, a lot better you know if we just apply ourselves in uh, certain areas as far as uh, trying to uh, bring our uh, intelligibility level up uh, you know even though we're going thousands of miles and uh, you know we're facing mother nature trying to bend our waveforms this way and that way you know we just have to to try to do the best we can and utilize uh, every piece of uh, our equipment to its maximum capabilities. Roger? Roger, Roger, Jim. I think that it's, it's delightful. Uh, the conversation that I'm having with you now is an easy conversation, and you sound great, and I'm not having to deal with a lot of noise. Um, it's, it's great knowing that I've had somebody listen to my audio and be able to make a critique of it. I don't know if you ever... One of the things that I struggle with is often the communications on the HF radio aren't as easy as this one is that I'm having with you today, and there's a lot of noise to deal with coming from the atmosphere or QRM, and I'm kind of at a loss to making adjustments to help make that the best I can using features like my noise, my notch filter, and my noise blanker, so I don't know if you ever do a net about that, but if you did, I would be interested. All right, uh, my Elmer did procure me a 7300 to... Uh use for about three months. So I had uh, an ample opportunity to uh, uh, to uh, run that 7300 through its uh, paces there and most of my uh, time with that uh, 7300 was engaged in the receiver port part of it. Uh, I think I only ran one day in the transmit part because I already know that. I mean uh, I've, we've probably tuned up uh, 250 some odd uh, 7300s over the past years and uh, so I know the transmitter in and out pretty much uh, so I was really interested in the receive capabilities and it was in most cases an AB between my uh, Yaesu FT990 which is about 35 years old uh, and uh, the uh, 7300 so my 990 has been modified to extend its uh, frequency range both in transmit and receive but uh, uh, come receive between the uh, 7300 and the 990 the 7300 had a much 
greater frequency range, particularly down in the bottom end. Now my 990 has been modified to extend its, its receive uh, audio capabilities on down towards 100 cycles or so, but the 7300 just uh, stock is uh, just beautiful down to, and we're talking about running in the, in the wide mode, 100 to 2900. Uh, we're talking about uh, running in the filter one. Filter one on the 7300 is uh, like uh, no filter. Uh, then uh, you must watch out for your noise blank you don't want to run that uh, because that will introduce distortion into your audio so only as a last measure should you run your noise blank uh, because it will just has the possibility of distorting the audio receive audio uh, the um, uh, the uh, noise uh, control is uh, I never ran that I made sure not to not to run that uh, because I wanted to um, uh, try to faithfully reproduce exactly what was going on of course you know you uh, could run it uh, probably pretty much any way you want to run it. I did notice in the uh, noise uh, reduction area that it did put a um, an echo, kind of like a reverb signal, in over the voice. Now it was very light, it was down minus 10 or so, but I could hear a reverb um, on the voice that it was an artifact of the uh, uh, noise reduction. So I, I just, uh, you know, and, and I wanted to try to be as uh, accurate as I could as far as recording, so I did not use uh, the noise reduction. But uh, what I'm saying about that 7300, it has a very uh, tremendous uh, bottom end response. I mean, just amazing. And uh, so to the point that uh, if you really want to do yourself a favor, uh, get yourself a, a really, uh, get your audio out of that box and get yourself a monitoring speaker monitoring system uh, i suggest you go down to your friendly walmart and uh, get yourself a 35 dollar lab tech uh, monitor system that is a 2.1 which gives you two side speakers and uh, a a a um a subwoofer. Now, it's important that the uh, you know the subwoofer allows you to start experiencing frequencies below a hundred cycles, down around sixty cycles. You know, and and there's hardly uh, uh, you know for that price, you know, thirty five bucks, you can't hardly beat it. So uh, uh, I would uh, you know do that. Uh, Two point one LabTech, uh, I believe that's that's what it is, and that will get you. What you need to do now, you need to calibrate that subwoofer because uh, it does have a control on it. So what you do is you just play a little bit of good music through it and then just bring that subwoofer control up to where uh, that baseline is uh, in respect to the balance of the piece of music and once you do that then you can plug that into your uh, into your uh, 7300 and just be um, amazed at a lot of the uh, tonalities that you can experience Roger 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 that sounds like a, um, a good suggestion um, so this isn't to disagree with your suggestion. The choice that I've made is to use the headphones. Um, it, it seems like I can pick up the danger sounds really well when I'm using the headphones. Um, it doesn't. It, it may not give me the same beautiful audio that you would get from some nice um, sub space speakers. Um, but it has helped me pick up um, really weak or weaker signals from other people. And so far, I've liked having the microphone where I haven't. I have a limited desk space, and it's helped me to just have the uh, microphone in, in the same place all the time. So ho hopefully, that's you know also a good choice to make. It, it works for me from a practical point of view. You at least so um, this is on O O L. Roger, now were you saying that you were using a uh, boom mic on your headset? Roger, Roger. It's, it's a mic that's actually attached to the headset in a direct. It's not perfectly in front of my mouth, but just a little bit off the side. Roger, Roger. Well, the thing is, though, you, you got to take into consideration that uh, if if you're monitoring yourself in your headset, you might have a tendency to have it uh, uh, distract from actually what you're saying. 
I mean, <laughs> uh, sometimes you can get lost. I'm just saying sometimes you can get lost in your earphones, particularly when you're monitoring yourself, you know, that that uh, it uh, begins to guide uh, the way you... Uh, the way you sound, or the way you think you sound, or, or your your speech, but it you know on the long run it is what what it is, and however you you want to run it, you know uh, you should. Uh, the thing, uh, another thing about the boom mic, uh, you're not running the boom mic now, is that a Roger? No, I guess if you consider the microphone that's attached to the headphone a boom mic, I'm not I'm not really sure what I should consider that. I just think of it as a mic that's attached to um, my headphone. So that, that's currently what I'm using. It's not a boom mic that's attached to my desk and it's just articulated to my desk. Oh, Roger, Roger. Well, it's, it's so whatever, whatever you think. I think that the main thing, and you you can cover the frequency range in a nice pair of uh, Sony earphones or something. You can cover the audio frequency range that I'm talking about with the extended low frequencies down there. Uh, you know, uh, if you're uh, capable of reproducing 70 cycles or so, because the radio is going to reproduce uh, 100 cycles for sure if uh, that's in the transmission signal that it's receiving. In other words, the 7300 has a very broad band, particularly when you're running it in the uh, uh, the maximum uh, capabilities of low frequency response. Roger. Roger, Roger. You know, Jim, I've just noticed that we've, um, we're, we, it's now 514, and I did hear you say earlier that you turned into a pumpkin at 5, so if, I'm just going to make sure that you don't turn into a pumpkin. Oh, Roger, I, yeah, I've already been into a pumpkin. I'm looking over the uh, <laughs> the round part of the pumpkin now. Yeah, i got to go, uh, but it's uh, I have enjoyed it. I hope you have too, and uh, if you get a chance, uh, uh, you go to YouTube and check out uh, your audio. Uh, you do a call letter search, uh, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor, Kilo Victor, and uh, that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. We're running about 1,050 recorded QSO Vlogs at the moment. You'll be looking for one in specific, and that would be one entitled My Group Air Check. 4320. My group air check 4320. Today's date. Roger. Roger, Roger. So, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor. This is Kilo Charlie 3, Oscar Ostadema, saying 73, and thank you very much for the help. Uh, Roger, Roger, Don. Three's that way, sir. You have a real good afternoon, a great weekend coming up. And uh, gosh, at uh, 15 past five, uh, we will uh, uh, cut out of here and we'll turn this frequency back to normal amateur radio use. This is Kilo Charlie 9, Victor, Kilo Victor, clear.